Okay, guys, so it is late on the 6th, I think, January 6th, 2024, New Year. Uh, my goal was to get the cab with the whole floor redone and, like, restored, pour 15, coated, undercoated, and the frame completely stripped and coated uh, and restored, like, between the cab mounts. Uh, and have the cab back on the frame with the doors on it and stuff so I could get it out of the garage by New Year's. So the first. Uh, we did not get that done. Um, I've been working on this thing pretty much every weeknight and straight through the weekends for like, I don't know, right around the time the first video came out. So like a month, five weeks, something like that. I don't know. Everything was more difficult than I thought. And now I'm just really tired and uh, it's taken a lot out of me working on this thing. However, we freaking got a truck, guys. Welcome back to Ranwen Park. Today is like day five, I think, of working on the 76 Crew Cab Dentside Ford. Uh, I think five days. My shop is an absolute dump. Um, stuff everywhere. Yeah, I've pretty much gone nonstop other than going to work during the week. But uh, anyway, I've gotten a couple things done off camera and uh, we're ready to kind of move on to the exterior stuff. So let's talk about what we've already got done. You guys have watched the videos, I'm sure. New floors all the way around. They came out absolutely awesome. Uh, the rear, all new. Things that you have not seen. I fixed the rocker. That was uh, earlier today, actually. So I did like, I don't know, eight or 10 inches of rocker in there. Came out awesome. I also bolted the rear door on, which is nice. I did that because we're going to be getting to this corner soon, and obviously I'm going to need it to get the gaps right. That's good. But what's probably cooler is I fixed the roof. I did that over the course of the last week after work, and uh, it came out freaking beautiful, like perfect. Like, look at that drip rail. Really nice. The uh, body line in the roof is really good. There's a little dent here. I got it out to the best of my abilities, but I couldn't really get it all the way. And to be honest with you, with something like that, I'd rather just have the dent than have Bondo. Like, it's a truck. It's been out in the field since 1976. It's going to have a couple dents. My 63 has a couple dents, and uh, I kind of like them. So, basically how I did this is uh, I unfolded the thing, as you can see, and then uh, I found all the cracking behind it. I just cut a big section out of it. And then uh, cut the two new panels out of one of the roof cuts that came with the 76 that were in the bed and just spot welded them in. Got it all done. And then a lot of grinding, a lot of polishing later, roof is all set. So what we're going to start working on now is the area between the passenger doors and then that back corner after that. So let's get going on this. So I have thought about this quite a lot. As I pointed out in the last video, the last owners just torch cut this out of here. And my concern was that there's not much space to weld a new one in. However, I do think I have enough material. When I cut this one out of the other truck, I cut a ton of material, like way into the pillar because, I don't know, you can't have too much, right? Um, so problem number one is that they torch cut right through the rocker, which sucks. Uh, and then that rocker right there is just shot anyway. So what I'm probably gonna do is cut that like right along here take it all out of there. On this side, I'm going to drill these two spot welds off to get this body piece off uh, cleanly. And then I will cut out a section of the rocker because this is in pretty good shape. Obviously, it's not really rotted at all. We're going to weld that in right there to complete that. And then what we're going to do is straighten out these torch cuts because I still have enough material to, to be on the flat. And I want to be on the flat because it's easier to clean up the weld later. I'll do the same thing on this side. We'll cut this up higher because the torch cuts go higher anyway. Maybe you can see that better on that side. And then we will do a matching cut on this side, right up the flat. And we'll just dial that in slowly but surely until we get it to sit in there perfectly. And then that way I can tack weld it in here uh, on the flat, grind it off so it's flush. You'll never know. 
spot weld the bottom back to the rocker again just like it was originally and then the only exterior weld you'll ever see is what three inches right across there and we'll obviously take care of that and do a really good job with it so we're going to start by cutting out the rocker and drilling the spot welds on this and getting a new piece of rocker in there so let's get moving so we are ripping right through this thing. I got it cut out, ground down. I also cleaned up in here because we're going to pour 15 it before we uh, cover it up since we'll never see it again. And I also cut my new piece of rocker there. Uh, it fits in just like that. So I'm just going to keep the momentum going and get this thing welded in and uh, we will uh, move on. And just like that, we have a rocker again. For those of you that are looking at that and saying, wow, Sean, those welds don't look great, that is because I'm almost out of argon, so I switched back to uh, flux core. So I'm, I'm farm welding like a peasant. It's funny. When I was younger, I started with flux core when I was a teenager, and like through most of my 20s, I was broke, so I used flux core. And I was a maestro with flux core. I could do anything. But uh, the last like four or five six years of solid core migging with argon and uh i gotta step up my game i am not good with the flux core anymore so this is like the best i could turn out in my defense i intentionally switched back to flux core to conserve the gas i have because you're never going to see this again so it doesn't really matter and because uh it's saturday night and my welding supply store isn't open till monday so i want to save the flux core to or the the solid wire and the argon to do the actual body work just as a side note slash maybe tech tip don't do body work or things that you actually want to paint over that is with uh, flux core because that flux will bleed out of the weld for quite a bit of time you can do what I would refer to as like seasoning it where like you weld it and then you grind it down and then you just let it sit and you will see white streaks come out of the welds. And you do not want that to come out under paint or under Bondo because it will help separate it. So if you wait until the flux bleeds out of the weld and then you grind it down a little bit more and then you paint it, like that's fine. I think my 63 has some flux core in it and that thing's been painted for five years or so and it's fine. But uh, just be very, very careful with flux core. If you can afford to use argon and solid wire, use it. Uh, anyway, so I guess the next thing that we're going to do is... Cut this body up higher, which is going to be a little bit of a sacrilege, but I have to do it because I'm not going to fill those torch cuts. So we'll come even with the torch cuts. Uh, and then we'll start trimming this down just to make it a nice straight cut. So get rid of all the torching damage. And then we will start uh, aligning this panel. And for those of you that have noticed, yes, I understand I do need to fix this a little bit. That's actually kind of a tough spot because if you look at the truck, there's really nowhere else that has that except right there. So, or a door, but I don't have any extra doors. So I'm going to cut a little piece off the red truck if it's good and weld that in later. So don't worry about that little guy. Also, I don't think I showed you. That's what it looks like when the spot welds are gone. This one's a little beat up. But we'll clean it up a little bit. And don't worry about these ones because we're going to cut it shorter than that. So those are going to be in the trash anyway. Anyway, let's go to some time-lapse uh, body trimming. So we're getting closer. Uh, we're at the point where I can kind of force the thing on here, even though it's just wedged around. And again, we're going to cut this here and it's going to match up, you know, uh, a butt joint right up against what we have. But the nice thing here is I kept some of the hinge mount. So now I can measure the distance between the hinge mount on the cab we're using and the hinge mount on the red panel. And I can just remove that out of the top, slide this thing up. And we will be uh, all set to then make our cuts down this side, get this thing to line up, and tack our panel in there. So, let me just lop that off the top real quick, and I'll show you where we're at. Now we're getting somewhere. So, we got this thing trimmed out really well. It's actually flush up here, flush over there. And it's actually just sitting there on its own, because it's just kind of, it fits that tight. 
I do have some more. Oh, there you go. Fell off. I do have some more trimming to do down near the bottom, but uh, we can't really go much further without putting the door on because I got to make sure that this body line is actually right before we do any final trimming. Once we have that, then we'll paint the whole inside, clean this thing all up, probably sandblast it, paint the whole inside of it, scrub off the outside, get rid of the red paint on our flange, and then we can tack weld it in. So let's bolt the door on this truck. Okay, so we have a door. Believe it or not, I got that on myself. I don't really know how. Just kind of muscled it in, got the bolt started, but it doesn't matter. It lines up pretty good, good enough for a reference point, and we got our panel in here. I did a little bit more trimming around the top and around the sides, and that thing's just sitting in there like that. I think it's pretty much perfect. I might have to come over a little bit at the bottom, and my lines would kind of agree with that, but uh, damn, we're close. As far as alignment top to bottom, you can see the door is a little bit below the body line, a little bit below right there too, and a little bit, I don't know how well you can see that, a little bit below right there too. So, I'm pretty sure we got it nailed right now. Also, I like the two-tone appearance to this. This is looking good. Uh, I think what I'm going to do for right now is get it kind of knocked in and aligned correctly, and then I'm just going to tack it and just let it simmer. Because what I'd like to do is I'll just tack all four corners, and then we'll put the back door on. If the gaps look good on both, then we'll weld it in. The problem with putting the back door on is once you have it on, you can't access this anymore and weld it. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt. That's why I worked off the front door, because I can open it and work still. But uh, we do need that reference point, I think. So, I'm going to go ahead and just trim this out, tack it in, and then I'll show you what it looks like on the front door. Then we'll start talking about putting a rear door on. So a little bit more trimming, and now I've got this thing. So door gap looks good. Again, it's too tight probably, but it's a good reference point. It's about the same all the way down. Maybe it gets a little tight at the bottom, but I'll uh, have some final adjustment as we're putting it in. Um, I did realize I can't tack it in yet, though, because I have to clean the whole inside and paint it and paint the whole inside of that. So... I'm also realizing that the 76 sheet metal is slightly thinner, or thicker that is, than the 79 sheet metal. Very, very weird. I measured it with a pair of calipers, and it was ever so slightly different. And they're not rusty, so it's not pitting from the backside. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, next thing is I'm going to clean this up, paint it. I'm going to clean that up, paint it. And then we'll be tacking this thing in, and then we can install the back door. So, one more step, then we can move on. Okay, so I didn't take a picture or anything of the back, but I painted it all. You can see in there, it's all black. Pour 15 in the cab. The back side of this, I didn't use pour 15 because it was going to get hot. So I used weld through primer so it survives the heat. And then uh, I just put some tacks in it because I don't want to do this whole thing with flux core. But I don't mind tacking it with flux core. And uh, I got to say, I absolutely nailed it. I mean, look at that gap. It's just a thing of beauty all the way down. A little bit loose right here, but we'll get it pushed in. That'll be nice. All the way down. Really no gap at all. It's like a perfect butt joint. Uh, this is like spot on. You can't really tell. I don't think a camera can do it justice, but it is about as flat as it can possibly be right there, so that'll be easy to fix. And best of all, the door gap is awesome. And then the level of the thing is good, too. We're a little bit low right there, a little bit low right there, and we're a little bit low right there. So I nailed it. Um, Going to have to pull the bottom in and get our spot welds back on, but that's no big deal. And then uh, we'll have to finish weld the whole thing. But, yeah, that's about that. Then, of course, we have to go back and fix the rust. But, yeah, that's not that big of a deal now that we got that on. That might have been the hardest part on the whole truck. So pretty happy it's done. On to putting the back door on to double check the gaps. And then uh, I'll get some gas and finish this thing. But probably the next thing we're going to do is start looking at the rear corner. Because, uh, again, i got to wait to get gas for this. So let's start working on that. So a couple days later now, guys. And uh, slight change of plans. Not going to move on to this rear corner yet. Although, I did cut it off the red truck. It's right over there in front of the new cab mount. We're going to stay on this. So I went ahead and put the rear door on. I got some gas for the welder. So we're going to finish this before we move on. It looks good with both doors on, doesn't it? 
Um, now with the doors, like this is not perfectly aligned. I just kind of threw it in there. Like I have to mess with the hinges quite a bit to get it where it should go. But uh, all that matters is that it's straight and that the gap doesn't change all the way down, which tells me that this is straight in, in the right spot. So we're all good to go there. I'm going to take this rear door back off so I can actually get at it. Then I'm going to weld that and I'm just going to show you what it's like when it's done so we can move on. All right, that's it guys. We are done with this. It's all welded in, ground down. You can't even tell it was done. It looks uh, pretty perfect. It's smooth as can be right there. The whole seam is really, really nice. Can't even tell I was in there. And that's gonna be a wrap on that piece. So, uh, well, one thing I noticed that's kind of funny, this thing has like 10,000 coats of red paint. Like, I don't think you can see it on camera. I doubt you can. But it is so freaking thick. It's going to take forever to get that red off there, but whatever. It is what it is. So uh, now that that's done, I think it's time to move on to the last objective for the major cab stuff, and that is that rear corner. So let's talk about drilling spot welds. Okay, so this is the whole rear corner off the red truck. Um, now, spot welds are interesting. Best thing to do is grind everything down because the easiest way to find all your spot welds is the low spots, right? So now it's easy to identify all the low spots because the paint is still there. So what you want to do is you take a nice sharp center punch, you put it right in the middle of your spot weld, you hit it, leave a center punch, then you take your drill with your spot weld cutter, just like that. You put that point right in the center and then you drill down and uh, Hopefully you got your position right and you take out the material in the top sheet Releasing it from the inside sheet. So what this is is the entire a pillar or hinge pillar It's not the a pillar. I guess it's like a C pillar and then that is uh, oops, This area right here, so what I'm going to try to do is release this panel from here which would allow me to kind of bang this back in, get it right again, and then just put the red one on just the way the factory did it. So, I'm not 100% sure this is going to work. It might be a total mess, but we're going to give it a go. So, uh, let's see what we got. So, we got her separated. Uh, here's the other piece. But honestly, we, I just made Swiss cheese out of it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe someone with more experience drilling spot welds could have done better than me. But from my perspective, there was no rhyme or reason as to where the spot welds were and also like what size they are. So like the actual size of the weld itself varied all the way across the board. So we're not going to be doing the spot weld method because if I do the same thing over here, I'm just going to ruin this panel. So uh, what we're going to do is trim it like just on the other side of the spot weld right here. And then weld our new iron in. But to, for starters, we need to cut this panel out and see if we can straighten right there, right there, and hammer this jam back in. In order to do that, we need to get this door aligned better because ah, can't can't close it. It closes, but it's not quite right. Obviously, it's sitting real low to the body line there, and we want this one really, really close so we can get not only the gap right, but also align this going around because that's our only reference point as to how high that the dent in the dent side is. And if we don't have that door aligned right, we could really screw this up in a hurry. So, first I'm gonna get the door aligned, then I'm gonna hack this thing out right around where the silver marker line is. Uh, and then we'll start matching it up kind of like we did the other side, but I'll catch up to you guys once I put the door on. Also, side note, this thing had like a quarter of an inch of Bondo in the back, so I have no idea what happened here. Like if someone tried to fix that and then they were like, well, why? Or maybe if they fix the back and then this happened later. I'm not really sure. But either way, we have a good panel and we're going to fix it. So let's get the door aligned. So it took me just short of forever to get this door aligned. But we're there, uh, at least close enough. The dent side feature is matched up pretty well. And there's some flex in the uh, B pillar there, oddly enough. So I actually have to use a shim to hold it up. So we're going to have to do something fancy during final assembly to get this rear door to hang right. But for now, it's fine. So, I'm just going to go ahead and zip this thing off at the lines. I know I have much more material than where those lines are, which is why I put them there. And we're going to do the same thing we did on the other side. Just slowly work our way into it and uh, don't remove too much material because it's a whole lot easier to remove more than it is to put some back on. So, we're going to start cutting. <laughs> All 
Okay, so our old panel's off. First thing I noticed, very solid in here, which is really good. It's even solid all the way down into the cab corner, which is shocking with the, like the rust this thing had. It doesn't need cab corners. That side needs a little work. This side needs nothing, which is crazy. Uh, next thing we're going to try to do is get these little dents out here on the top and bottom. Obviously, I didn't want to cut everything out because now that the bottom's gone, this dent is fixable. So, I mean, while I'm filming here. <laughs> I mean, you can see it come right out. I just got to do some hammer and dolly work. There's a little pinch right here. And uh, that thing's going to be fixed. I'm going to get that right out. And that way we're replacing the absolute bare minimum that we need to replace. So this is good. And then what we're going to do is close our door. And then we're just going to hammer and dolly until we get this C-pillar back aligned and straight. Which is going to take some significant work. But once we've done that, then we can trim this thing down a little bit shorter and then start welding our corner back in. So we got our work cut out for us. Literally, I guess, no pun intended. Um, yeah, let's keep moving. Try to get these dents out of here. And uh, I'll just show you guys the end result of that in a few minutes. So that first dent is pretty much gone. There's a little bit left. I can probably do a little more work with it before we weld in the new panel, but it's pretty much gone. And again, guys, like I don't build these things to be like concourse show vehicles. Like this truck was built to work and it's going to continue working. Like the 63, uh, I use that for everything. We, I, I work it all the time. So I, I don't really want something that's completely dent free. Or that is to say, if there's dents, I'd, I'd rather them just stay there than have a truck full of Bondo. Because this thing's just going to go to work and probably get more dents and scratches and things. So I don't mind it. Anyway, as you guys saw in the time lapse, I went ahead and smashed this uh, C-pillar kind of back in. And I pretty much got it. Like from the bottom to like right there is good. I went a little too far right here, but it's kinked. So once I cut this out, I'll go back a little. That'll be good. And then up here is pretty good. I think it's got to come in a little more, but I was really pounding on it and it didn't want to move. So I think once I get rid of this little flange that's still on here, then I'll be good to go. But even the dent in the body, like if you can even see it because I completely mangled it, it's in pretty much the right spot. So I feel pretty good about trimming up a little bit more in here and down here. By the way, this dent in the bottom is completely gone too. I, I took care of that off camera. Uh, and then we're going to trim the flange off and then we have to clean the whole inside and paint it So I'm just going to go ahead and do some of that stuff uh, off camera and I'll just show you guys what the results are going to be because You guys have seen me do a lot of sanding and painting and trimming. So I don't think you need to watch anymore uh, I'll get right back to you. So I've got this thing trimmed down a whole lot more now looking a lot better obviously there's no gap here because uh, it's sitting like on top of the door seam um, in case anyone was wondering how exactly I lined this up, like what kind of points was I using, I marked right under the drip rail before I cut it off the other one. So that silver sharpie right there was right up against the drip rail. And sure enough, I measured on the other side from the drip rail to this cusp right here. And it's exactly the same on this side with the panel sitting right there. So this panel's just sitting here. It's not welded in or anything. Uh, my next steps are going to be cutting around the silver on top and bottom, get it trimmed so it'll fit. Probably on the bottom, I'm gonna cut more out of the red panel because I want as much of the original truck as possible. On the top, I am gonna cut the truck right there and use the red panel. For one, because I want the gas tank door. This didn't have the, the tank in the cab. This is a 79 cab, they didn't have that. Uh, however, I want this to be true to form for a 76 cab, so I want it to have the gas tank uh, in the cab, even though I'm not going to use it, but it's cool to have the cap there and stuff. And it is original for the cabin bin. So I'm going to keep it that way for originality. Um, yeah, we're pretty much good to go to trim this thing down. Also, just as a side note, I cleaned this thing all out inside here. 
and I just want to notate one more time that it is so clean. It's like brand new black painted metal from 1976. Like, who would have guessed that? Usually the cab corner is the first thing to go, you know? And these things are clearly stock. They've just never been messed with and never needed it. So we're just going to spray the whole inside of that. And then I'll open the door here. Obviously, I got this seam straightened out really, really well. I didn't really show you guys, but... Yeah, so the jam is straightened again. Didn't necessarily think I'd get it that good, but I did. And what I'm going to do is basically trim this right here, right up to where the spot welds are. And I did the same thing on this. I just trimmed the flange right to where the spot welds are. Then we'll just seam, we'll seam weld right up this, grind it down. It'll be like we never did it. Last thing, too. I don't know if you guys can see. I guess you can, actually. Uh, the, where the spot welds are on the back side of this. You can see them really clearly. If I was to drill this from the back side, it would be really easy. However, look at like those three right there. And you can see what I was talking about, that there's no rhyme or reason to the gap between them or where they are. Like this one's super close to the edge. That one's twice as far away. The gap between that one and that one from that one to that one is not even close to the same. So that's why I had such a problem getting this panel off without turning it into Swiss cheese. Anyway, we have a plan and a path forward. I'm just going to do a little more trimming on this panel, get it to fit right, paint everything, and uh, I'll catch up with you guys before we start welding. There we go, guys. So uh, it's trimmed in there pretty well. Our door gap obviously looks quite good. Um, the fit up to the body is real good with the exception of right there. I just have to grind a little bit out of there, but no big deal. So we're pretty much at the stage where we can tack this thing in. Um, even the door alignment's pretty good here. It has to come up a little bit, but it's really, it's the door that has to come up a little. So I got it wedged there, but still not 100% right, but not bad. Um, again, it, the measurement from the drip rail down is like perfect. So I'm really not worried about this panel fitting right. Uh, anyway, so all I got to do now is pull the thing back out of there, paint the whole inside, clean up the back side of this panel, paint the inside of that, and then we're going to tack it in. So since we got it to this stage, you guys kind of know what we do next. I'll show it to you tacked. Guys, I was going to skip to just showing you this all welded together, but I figured I would make the point here that this is why uh, you take all the extra time and do it right. Um, I wire wheeled this and acetoned it all. I just painted it. And uh, it's just good five years, ten years down the road when you're driving the truck to know that the panels, even in the back of what you worked on, look like this. Right? So it's not going to rust. You have nothing to worry about. Anyway, I just wanted to show. That's why you take hours to fit it up right and, you know, clean it, prime it, paint it, get it right. So anyway, here's what it looks like tacked in. All right, so we're tacked in. It looks really good. Um, door jam is nice. The gaps are really quite nice. Yeah. I even started the arduous task of uh, taking the red paint off, which is going to be brutal. You can see right here, I got a nice spot to show. I see six coats in there. But what's weird is, I think the top four are red, something like that. Anyway, that's that. Uh, things I'm happy with. These areas right here, right on the side of the truck that you're going to see, the gaps came out perfect. It's like dead flush. I love it. Things I'm not happy with. There was a dent right here on the corner, and I never noticed it. And I'm kind of kicking myself because I could have fixed it so easy. I ended up pushing the red, the new panel in and then tacking it, and it kind of pulled it back out a little bit. I might be able to kind of fix that later. Either way, it's not the end of the world, but it's annoying. And then I was a little bit too tight down here, so it's like folded in a little bit. But I think once it's welded, I can get in there with a pry bar and pull it out a little right there, and I'll be fine. Otherwise, it's pretty mint. I'll close the door here. This thing's sagging a bunch. i got to put the wedge in. I'll actually just do that real quick here. So there it's wedged, looks pretty good. It's a little tight in here, but this actually has to come in a little. I didn't actually tack the whole jam yet. I only did the outsides, so. We're looking pretty good. It's gonna take a little bit more work. Uh, as far as the dent, I'm a little bit low, but I'm also a little bit low over here. So I actually think I'm in the perfect spot. And again, I measured from here to here after I tacked it, and it's exactly the same as the other side. So I know we're good. Anyway. That's pretty much that. I'm just going to go ahead and finish welding this thing. I'm going to spend a shitload of work on it. And then uh, 
grind it all down, get all the red paint off, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. That's a wrap, guys. Came out pretty great. I even stripped all the red paint off, as you can see. Uh, there was approximately 946,000 coats of paint on it. It took forever. Anyway, uh, completely seam welded, ground down. Everything looks good. A couple frustrating things. The dent here I pointed out before. Also, there's a dent right there in the replacement panel that I did not notice somehow. But I do think I can actually get through it through there and maybe hammer it out. So we shall see. Down here turned out really good. The door jam is pretty good. Uh, I think it could be better, but it's going to be all seam sealed anyway, so you'll never know. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Can't really beat it. I am going to have a little bit of filler in some of these areas. Down here where I had too much pressure and it kind of veed in, I did do a relief cut all the way down, so I got that a whole lot better. Still, there's going to be a little filler. I'm not good enough to do something like this with no filler. Some guys are, but they do this their whole lives. So, that's about as good as you're going to get out of me, at least. And I think it's great, and it's going to be a very, very, very minimal amount of filler to make it look perfect. So, with that, this cab is pretty much done. There's a couple other little things. Um, I'm probably just going to knock out a couple things really quick off camera. But uh, we're going to have to hunt around to find... Just anything else we have to do before I get this thing up in the air, pour 15 the bottom, sandblast the frame, pour 15 the frame, and put the cab on the frame. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm trying to do this before the new year for a variety of reasons. I really need to get this thing out of the shop by then, and it would be helpful if it was on a frame. That way I could move it around the property, bring it in the shop and work on it, take it back out, etc. So that's the goal. We're close. It's not quite Christmas yet, so we got a little bit of time left, but we got to keep grinding away at it. So... I'm going to do a quick once over of the truck, make sure there's nothing else that I want to fix right now before I pour 15 to the bottom and get it on the frame. So let's do that real quick. Okay, guys. So there was a couple more little things under the truck, some rod areas that I wanted to fix. I made a couple little panels and filled a couple holes, stuff like that. Nothing really worth filming. So now we are a few days later, a week later, maybe. It is now Christmas Eve. Uh, I am very sick have a real bad sinus infection, should not be out here working, but we're gonna try to stay on track. So, I got this thing moved out, lifted up a little bit more on some blocks, and what we're going to do is finish wire wheeling any areas I missed when sandblasting the underside, and then we're gonna spray this thing down with the Pore 15 Metal Prep, which is like a zinc phosphate or phosphoric acid or whatever the heck that stuff is. And then uh, we're going to rinse it all off with water because it's going to take quite a while to get it like dried off. And the reason why I'm forcing that through today is A, because I'm on a timetable and I want to get this done. And B, <clears throat> because it's like 40 degrees out and it'll dry and I don't have to heat the garage. If I just put a fan on it, it won't like freeze. So I'm just going to get this thing sprayed down and then rinsed off and then dried off. And then we'll be ready to pour 15 the bottom of it when I'm not uh, dying. So... Let's get moving. All right, guys, a few days later, I am back. I am reasonably healthy on the upswing for sure. And uh, I got something to show you. The whole bottom of the truck has been pour 15. It's looking good, really solid under there. I did like a coat and a half. You're supposed to do two coats, but uh, honestly, it's so brutal being under there and like working upside down and painting that. I just did like a coat and a half, and uh, I'll do more of it once it's on the truck. Put a whole nother coat on and then like undercoat it or something like that. I don't know. We'll do something along those lines. Anyway, now that that's done, all we really have to do is take the red cab off the old frame, sandblast the frame, pour 15 most of it, or maybe like a third of it where the cab sits, and then drop this thing on there, and we have a rolling chassis. So, I think the next thing we're gonna do Fire up the Massey Ferguson, pick up the red cab, and get that frame out from under it. So let's get rolling.
so that's that cab is off the frame I don't think you guys could tell in the video but the cab uh, basically folded in half when I picked it up it is now uh, kinked right there maybe you can see that yeah so I think the only thing really holding it together is probably the glass at this point but anyway it's going to the junkyard doesn't really matter the frame however not bad it's got some pitting and stuff but now that I can see like under the cab and everything it's not bad it has no rot really anywhere so I will say though the cab mounts are shot that's a common thing this one already had a plate welded into it so did this one so did that one and so did that one but uh, other than that not bad so I got to replace the cab mount brackets which they sell because that is relatively common anyway next thing we have to do take the trans out maybe take the transfer case out probably I might do that when I get it in the garage um, and then basically sandblast from right here to like right here ish that bolt line something like that and then pour 15 it that way we can put it in the garage and put the other cab on it and then we'll have a rolling chassis also I can just hook up the steering column again and uh, this thing will be able to like yard steer and I can move it around with the Ranger and stuff get it out of the way etc etc so that is the next objective um, let's get to sandblasting So now we have a chassis in the garage. Just FYI, this barely fits in here. I mean, it's like, uh, I don't know, eight inches from the door over there and I can barely open my toolbox back there. So this thing is a freaking school bus. Somewhere along the line, we're definitely gonna have to take all the plow mount stuff off the front and the front bumper, which would buy me eh, another foot, 18 inches. Maybe then I could open my toolbox or like walk around the backside of it or something. But that is all okay because it's not going to be in the garage for long. Now, this frame looks pretty darn good, even better than I thought. It's in really, really nice shape. It has absolutely no rot anywhere that I can find. As you guys saw, I sandblasted exactly what I said I was going to sandblast, maybe like 10 inches behind the cab to like maybe 10 inches in front of the cab. We sprayed it down with the uh, acid etching stuff. Uh, we washed it all off with water, which I don't think I filmed, but... I washed it off with water and really it's ready for pour 15 with a couple glaring exceptions. One, our body mount brackets are smoked. You can see someone already welded this plate on here. They actually did it on all four corners. This might be the worst um, hack welding I've ever seen. Only to be rivaled by these body mounts that someone put on this thing. Like look at that farm weld. That is pretty remarkable. That's just a bunch of plates like bubble gum together. And I don't know why they would do that, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to cut all that out. Um, one thing about this frame, I guess, it is the perfect frame for this project. Why is that? Well, I found the VIN number here. It does match the title and the cab. Well, the red cab, not the black cab. But the VIN for the red cab is going on the black cab on the door. So it's all going to match. Numbers matching F26 High Boy Crew Cab. However, it is just hacked up enough via these body mounts or this cross member someone cut short that I'm gonna have to fix or the like butchery that went on with the plow mount or the fact that we're gonna have to fix these. It is just hacked up enough that it will never be a perfectly clean concourse frame again. However, it is just solid enough that it has absolutely no rod on it at all. 
It is very, very solid. It is 100% structurally sound. And therefore, I no longer feel bad about cutting up a very, very good original and super rare frame to put four link and coils on the front with super duty axles or super duty rear leaf springs. Um, so yeah, that's going to be pretty cool because this will be a numbers matching true F26 crew cab truck. However, I can still do all the things that I want to do to it without feeling bad or guilty in any way. So time to get cracking on this frame. It's going to take a little bit more work than I thought because we're going to have to fix these brackets. I think I mentioned before while filming, I can buy these. Yeah, I was lying to you. Can't buy them. No one makes them. We're going to be fixing them. Um, we are going to take the factory four speed out of this thing. We are going to take the divorce transfer case out of this thing. Although I've kind of been thinking about it, I might use the divorce transfer case. It's a nice setup and it allows me to keep the front and rear drive shafts, which would be pretty cool. And then I could use, I was going to put a coyote and a 10 speed in this. I could use a Mustang setup and just do a two wheel drive trans divorced, which would be pretty wild. And at least opens up my opportunities for buying an engine in trans, but that's down the road. Um, we are going to take it out for now so we can pour 15 the whole bottom side of that bracket. Anyway, let's strip this thing down, cut what's left of the body mounts off because you can see I got a little lazy and just tore the old cab off. That's a piece of the old cab stuck to it still. So uh, let's strip this thing down and get it ready to pour 15 front and rear. Now. So we got this thing pretty much stripped. Tranny is out, transfer case is out. I didn't film very much of it, but honestly, I didn't think you guys were going to want to watch me uh, undoing U-joints for 90 minutes. In any case, it's done. I just got to kind of muscle them out from under the thing. Um, I also went ahead and cut one of the plates off the top of this thing. It's right there. Someone hacked that thing together. It went like that. That's garbage. I'm going to go and fix this one. I'll show you guys how I fixed it. Then I'm going to fix the other four. Then we just have to do some wire wheeling the places I couldn't sandblast, get this thing cleaned up a little bit more, get this tranny cross member out because we probably won't even end up using it and that way I can get under it a whole lot better. And then we're gonna pour 15 this thing and get ready to put the cab on it. So let's start going on these body mounts. All right guys, so little intermission here. I got the rear mounts done. Completely welded up. They look really really nice. This side is done too Looking good and just for the record these ones are bolted on. I don't know why uh, I am a, I imagine they would have been riveted on someone probably cut them off and fixed them and bolted them on At some point in the past anyway I just wanted to weld these plates on while they were on the frame to make sure I didn't spread these or anything and they go back on correctly I will uh, zip these bolts off and then uh, Pour 15 the frame on the back side and then weld the back side of this and maybe even the inside just for some added strength. And those will be done and then put it back together with new hardened hardware. On the front, I just want to show kind of how you do this. So I made a cardboard template like you guys have seen me do a hundred times before. I ground all the rust off this a hundred percent. Painted it with weld through primer, painted the back side of my plate with weld through primer, and it is going to go on just like that. I'm going to weld it on there right now, and we're going to be off to the races. That one's over there too. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and zip these together, and I'll show you what it looks like welded up in about 10 seconds. Not even. Two seconds. See how fast that was? All welded up and ready to go. You guys ever notice how when I'm filming I like smack stuff like that? I don't know why I do it. Don't worry about it. Anyway, uh, this side's all done too. Came out great. You got to love a good MIG weld. Um, yeah, love it. That's going to be it as far as body mounts. Obviously, I do have to drill the holes in the center still, but I wasn't 100% confident where exactly they went relative to the mount itself before I welded the plate on. So I figured what I'd do is measure up later and then put a hole like right in the center of the radius on these and then like, I don't even know on these, maybe right in the center of the square. I don't know. Maybe I'll reach out to someone else that has one of these and see where the holes are located and then drill it. But it's just a three quarter inch hole for the factory mount to go through, which I do have all the factory mounts and everything brand new. So we'll drill the holes and then uh, we'll be ready to go. But uh, why don't uh, we go ahead and pour 15 this thing first? So I'm going to not bore you guys with cleaning up the absolute dump that I've created here. 
I'm just gonna fast forward to the point where we're painting this thing. All right, couple hours later, we got a couple coats on this thing. Took a lot longer than I thought it would. I've literally been out here for like uh, three or four hours, but uh, it's all done. Inside, outside, top, bottom, all over it. Really well coated with pour 15. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the end of that. Now, all we need to do is let this dry for well, a day or so. And then uh, we are going to be wrapping it up. And all we need to do to wrap it up is drill the holes in these body mounts. Mount the rear body mounts because I did zip them off the frame. I don't think I showed you guys that, but I took them off. Uh, one's in the vise over there. And then uh, I got to paint those, put them back on. And then we're going to be figuring out how the heck we put the cab on. Now I've been thinking a lot about how you put the cab on. Originally I was going to hoist it to the ceiling, which I've done before. But I don't think I have enough height to do that. And also, I'm kind of sketched out by like bending the drip rails because that's how the drip rails got damaged on this cab in the first place. So, I don't know. I'm thinking about other ideas. So, I'm going to brainstorm on that for about a day or so. And uh, I will be back tomorrow. And we will start looking at getting this cab on here once the paint's dry. So, let's fast forward to then. Well, guys, we're in the home stretch. It's all painted. Looks good. I even painted these rear brackets. We just got to put them back on. So we're almost done. All we really have to do is put the cab on. We do have a couple issues though. Maybe some hurdles, if you will. Number one, I've been having some shoulder problems. Had to go to the doctor yesterday. Without going too much into that, we'll just say that I have some pretty significant problems with my right shoulder. That's a hurdle because it hurts all the time. Number two, I'm an idiot. I've been uh, just kind of jumping over the frame when I need to get over this thing while I've been working on it because it's annoying to walk around it. Well, when I was painting it, I just hopped over the frame and my left foot landed like on top of an extension cord and I sprained the hell out of my foot. So I'm like a little bit limpy now and have been for a couple days. So there's that, that's gonna be annoying. And the reason why both these things are hurdles is because the next thing we have to do is lift that cab up and get it on this frame. So I really have to think about how exactly one guy gets this cab high enough in the air. I think I pointed out to you guys, I was just going to hoist it up to the main beam of my garage. I've done that a bunch of times and hung all kinds of things from it. That works great, except for the fact that I don't have the height because the hoist takes up like 18 inches once you strap it up there. And I just won't have enough height. And also, I can't get the cab far enough forward doing that because the front of it needs to be all the way over here. So that beam is all the way back there. So that's not gonna work. So I need to get this thing up higher, roll the frame under it. I do think I have a way to do that, but I have to go out and get some stuff and I have to think about that a little bit and make sure it's actually gonna work right. But either way, it's going to be a challenge for one guy to get this thing like three and a half feet up in the air maybe so I can roll this thing under it. Uh, so that's gonna be a hurdle, but we are gonna get going. First things first, I'm going to get this frame out of here and get that cab over here and lift it up. Uh, and the reason why is because I want to get the frame back in under the truck as fast as possible so I can turn the heat on because it's freaking cold out here. But I don't want to turn the heat on because I'm going to have to have the door open for a half hour or more while I move the, the frame around. So let's get cracking and get this frame out of here and get this cab up in the air. All right, guys. So I wasn't going to film again until uh, I had the cab up in the air and showed you guys how. But I feel like I have to show you this. So this is what I got going on. Don't worry about the cinder blocks. I'll show you once we're done. Um, yeah, I'm either a genius or a completely reckless psychopath. If the video ends here, uh, it's because the farm jack kicked out from under the truck and killed me. So yeah, don't worry about that. Well, we got her up in the air. It's about as high as it can go. It's like right up to the ceiling. Um, yeah. This might have been genius because now I can just slide the frame right under this thing. In case you're wondering, these are old uh, extruded fence posts. And I had a bunch of them because when I was building the bed for the 63, I needed like stringers to go under the bed. You know, not the frame, but just supporting the bed itself. And I went to my local metal place and they had these things and they wanted like, I think they were like 10 bucks a piece. So I bought a ton of them, just filled my truck bed with them. And I ended up using like six of them under the bed of the... 63 Ford, but I had a couple of them laying around. They were perfect for this job. So I did take the rear tires and wheels off, set this thing down on dollies. So that allows me to get low enough. I can get under there, as you can see, 
but also it allows me to move it around back and forth, which will be nice. I might take the front off too and put it on dollies, uh, or maybe not. The rears had locking lugs on it because the previous owner was just terrified that someone was going to steal his American racing wheels. So I didn't have the, the correct socket, obviously, so I just welded some nuts on and zipped them off that way. So I got them. Fortunately, the fronts don't have them, so I can just zip those off and put it on dollies too if I need to. But I think I'm just going to fire up the Ranger over here and start pushing this thing right on under. So let's wrap this up. Well, we did it, guys. In case you were wondering how one guy with a messed up shoulder walking around with a limp gets a, I don't know, 12 or 13 or 1,500 pound cab up in the air and back on a frame, that's how I just showed you. So, door's closed. Everything's inside. I can now crank up the heat in here. Actually, I already did. It's warm in here now. And uh, we can start putting this cab on. So, first thing, I'm going to throw the cab mount brackets on the frame with new hardware. And then I can start figuring out how the heck I'm going to jack this thing up in the air and get the uh, sign posts out from under it and then lower it back down on the frame. The rear is pretty easy. I can do it with a high lift jack uh, and then just like ratchet it down. That'll be fine. The front's going to be a little bit trickier. Not really sure how I'm going to do that, but it uh, doesn't really matter for you guys because I'm just going to show you this thing uh, kind of back down on the mount. So here we go. And that's a wrap, guys. We got it bolted down. Both rear mounts are in. Front left mount is in. I still have to weld in the new mount on the, the new cab mount on the right side. I didn't do it because I wanted to put it right in the right spot. So now that it's on the frame and I have it aligned and everything's good, I can just uh, bolt that mount in and then weld it to the chassis and we're good to go. It'll be perfect. So now that this thing is down on the frame, I got to do a couple more things. I have to do that cab mount, like I said. Got to put the driver's door on. Passenger rear door. I have to figure out why this this uh, drum is locked up. I don't know what the deal with that is, but I'm gonna have to take the drum off. And then I'll put the tires back on. And then we're gonna be thinking about getting this thing out of the garage and into the daylight so you guys can see it. And that might be interesting. It measures like it's really, really close to making it out. I think it'll go, I, I don't know. I've had the, when I delivered my lathe back here, I had it in the bed of my 63, the Honey Badger, and I backed that in here and hoisted the lathe up to the beam and then drove the truck out. And uh, I had to flatten the tires to do that, but that truck is on 37s and lifted. This one is not lifted and on 35s, but this is a high boy, so they sit pretty high from the factory. So, I don't know. I think I could probably roll it to the door on the dollies and it would definitely go, but I'm going to put the tires back on it and see what it'll do because it doesn't really have to come out of the garage just yet anyway. So... I'm just gonna fast forward to having all that stuff done so you guys can see the finished product. Well, she's back out in the daylight, guys. Um, pretty much done for now. The only thing I didn't get done is putting the passenger side rear door on and that is because that door needs some work done on the window mechanism. So I'm going to do it before I put it on so I can put this outside and close it up and then just tarp it and stuff. But, uh, also going to have to, you know, prime a little bit of the bare metal and things, but stuff I don't need to document via video for you guys. I did weld the passenger side body mount in so brand new body mount down in there that all looks good painted up to match um yeah this thing is nice i mean it is great going into a project and having everything underneath it 
completely restored, 100% painted, top coated, ready to go. So I am happy right now. I also need to put the steering column back in it real quick and hook that up just so I can like move the thing around the property a little bit. You saw in that last little time lapse, I have to like shimmy the wheels back and forth to steer it, which is a pain in the butt. So uh, yeah, now that's gonna be about it for today's episode. But the question is, what do we do next on this thing? We could mock up the motor in trans if I had one, which I don't yet, but I'm looking. We could start looking at interior stuff. Uh, we could do a little more body work. It's got a couple dents like this cowl that we're gonna be fixing. But I think I'm gonna skip to the axles. Let me show you why. Yesterday, I was doing the obligatory perusing on Facebook Marketplace looking for parts, and I found a screaming deal on something. So I took the old honey badger here, the next town over, and bought a whole frame cut out of uh, I think 07 or 08 F350. So there's our super duty axle, but I also got the coil springs we need, the radius arms I need, um, even the full brake assembly, master ABS, which we were not using ABS, but it's there. Uh, steering box I'm gonna need, sway bar I'm gonna need, some of the steering linkages I'm gonna need. So basically we have everything we need for our front end with the exception of the brackets and things to hang the radius arms off the high boy frame. So I'll have to order that stuff, but I could tear this thing all apart and start rebuilding this axle and painting it and getting it all nice and ready to go in there. And also disassembling the whole front end on the high boy frame because all these steering components and things are going to come out and get trashed. Motor mounts can come out, shock mounts can come out, um, all the brake proportioning valve and stuff can come out. Basically everything you see here. There's a lot of like power steering stuff down there. Like this has a ram for steering, which is interesting. So uh, yeah, that might be next. I haven't really decided yet. Maybe we'll do the rear axle. I don't have a rear axle yet, but I will soon. Or maybe we'll keep going on the interior. I do not know. But what I do know is you're going to see this truck finished and relatively quickly right here on Ranwen Park. So I will see you guys next time.